Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. All right, today we are on our second Sidra, our second Aliyah of our Torah portion of Zav in the book of Leviticus, taken from Levit Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12, in the Protestant Bibles that would be verse 19, all the way to chapter 7, verse 10. All right, so let's jump right into it today. All right, Leviticus chapter 6, I want to focus on verse 19. Uh, this is talking about the sin and the guilt offerings, and it says, The Kohen, or the priest, who offers it for sin should eat it. Huh, kind of interesting. Part of that uh, sin sacrifice, uh, part of that, um, uh, that sin offering, he's going to actually eat. He's actually going to consume, which kind of seems odd. But not really when you consider um, all the different cultures in the world. Um, there is a concept in many different cultures and in many different cultural religions, um, a concept regarding the sin eater, somebody who eats or consumes sin to get rid of it so that it is no more, so that the guilt and the consequences don't fall on uh, the particular uh, people who have sinned. Possibly, maybe they get this from the Levitical priesthood. So it says the Kohen. Or the priest who offers it for sin should eat it. It must be eaten in a holy place in the court of the tent of meeting. So what happens when we eat food? Well, energy is made. Food is converted into energy. And, you know, there's a lesson to be learned um, is, 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 is in the fact that we try to turn our vices into virtues. We try to turn our negatives into positives. So here's this Kohen, this priest, who eats a part of the sin offering, and it kind of makes you think of all these other cultures who uh, have these sin eaters. Uh, but what do you do when you eat food? Like I said, you eat food, you consume it, and the consumption of that food is turned into energy so that you can continue on living. And so it's as if the priest eats this sin offering so the other person could could continue on living and when you eat food that food that physical food is converted into energy for our bodies so that we can continue to live and that teaches us a lesson in that you know whatever negative uh, um, virtues that we have uh, whatever hurts habits hang-ups whatever vices we have we can turn into virtues we can turn the negative into positive let me just give you one example for, for instance anger anger could be used for good or for evil. Most of the time, probably over 90% of the time, it's used for evil. It's used for bad. We get angry. We let our flesh get involved in that anger. And in that anger, we hurt people. And we do wrong things. Maybe our intentions might be good. Maybe not. But most of the time, the anger just doesn't turn out well. Um, there's a, a passage, I can't remember the citation of the passage uh, at the moment where it's located, but it says that, you know, anger does not produce the righteousness of God. Uh, but at the same time, there's another passage in Ephesians 4.26 that says, be angry and sin not. So anger in and of itself is not a sin. It's what we do with that anger that makes it a sin or not. So we, if, if we have an anger problem or anger issues, we can turn that, that negative, that evil, that hurtful, that harmful, that destructive anger and, and, and take that vice and turn it into a virtue for good. When righteousness is, uh, when uh, anger is turned towards righteousness, when anger is turned towards the good, it is called righteous indignation. It means being angry uh, at the right things. Being angry at the appropriate times and for the appropriate reasons and acting out in anger in righteous ways. What is, a, what is an example of righteous indignation? When Yeshua walked into the temple and he saw the court of the Gentiles being occupied uh, by, by all these money changers, by all these merchants. They were sacrificial animals. They were people buying and selling things. And it really ticked them off because that's not what the court of the Gentiles was for. What they were doing is they were keeping Gentiles out of the court of the temple. Uh, and so they couldn't worship God. They couldn't get to know the God of Israel. 
And, and, and the court of the Gentiles was an open invitation for the Gentiles to come, to be invited, to understand, to know, and to have a personal relationship with the God of Israel. And so these, these merchants, these money changers, were keeping Gentiles from knowing God. And this was unjust. This was wrong. And, and, and turning this, this court of the Gentiles, which was, a, which was a, uh, so supposed to be a court of worship, a court of prayer, and turning it into a bazaar, turning it into a flea market, and, 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 and turning it into something materialistic. And that just really grind Yeshua's gears. So what did he do? He just took a cord and made a homemade old-fashioned whip, and he just went around, started whipping these money changers, started turning over their tables, starting letting, letting all the sacrificial animals loose and go. And he says, this house is to be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. And it really ticked Yeshua off. So this is an example of Yeshua taking anger and turning it into righteous indignation when he said, you have... Uh, this is a house of prayer, and you have made it into a den of thieves, and he kicked out and cleansed the temple. Why? So that the Gentiles can come once again into that courtyard and, and to find and to have a personal relationship with Yeshua. So uh, may this be the lesson for us today. Whatever, whatever vices that we have, whatever negative habits or negative traits that we have, let's try this week to focus in on understanding why we do what we do and we feel the way we feel. And why we react the way we react. And to take that and to try to turn it towards the good. See how we can take a negative trait and turn it towards a positive. How we can take a, a vice and turn it into a virtue. That's our challenge for this week. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.